up everybody welcome back to the channel so it's been a minute got you some content we got a lot of cool stuff going on today so please thank you guys for checking out the channel and don't forget smash the thumbs up button so right off the bat you guys today is the day we are going to be saying goodbye to the second gen swap s467 turbo setup uh, it does have a new home and a new future owner uh, it was good while we had her on man it was a good time uh, it was an awesome turbo I love it but uh, as as like many things in life on the better so today we're going to be fully removing the uh, second gen swap setup s467 everything's coming off um, I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step how to remove it but you know I'll, I'll just be filming a little bit here and there and stuff like that. so next I want to show you guys something okay this is why you do not get eBay parts or yeah, eBay brand knockoff parts, okay? Uh, that's also another reason why in the last video I had where I talked about the track bar, I was a little hesitant to put the link to the track bar because I wanted to make sure this track bar was legit. Well, and I don't care about it. I mean, it's whatever, but, well, it ain't. So, check this out. So, about two days ago, I was in a parking lot leaving, going back on the main road, and I freaking was turning, and I hit a, a, a nasty pothole. I mean, nasty and it freaking bent the track bar, like legitimately. It bent, it bent the threads on the track bar. Like I, when I was driving on the road after I hit the bump, my steering wheel was sideways, and I'm like, what the fuck? But it was driving fine, like you know, it drove, it drove fine. It's just the steering wheel was sideways, and I'm like, okay, something's not right. Get home, get underneath the truck. First thing I see, that right there. So we're gonna be taking that off today because I'm gonna be getting a full refund for my money. Uh, I think I spent like 290 bucks on it, so I'm going to get my money back on that uh, and get me a better track bar. Uh, I got one lined up right now, uh, a whole lot better looking than this one was, or looked like it was. This one looked fine, it's just, I guess it wasn't strong metal. So we're going to be taking that off, getting that all out, and taking off the second gen swap. The cool thing is, is that this is probably like my, I don't know, Ooh, is that a hornet's nest? What is that? I think that's a hornet's nest. I gotta look at that. Is that just mud? It's probably just mud. Uh, that no, that looks like a, a wasp nest. You guys see that? What in Sam hell? Anyways, yeah, so we're gonna be taking off the second gen swap kit. Uh, I'm gonna get it all boxed up today, take it to UPS so I can send it off to the new seller. Awesome Turbo, who, uh, he's gonna enjoy it a lot. Cause I know I did, and this turbo has plenty, plenty of life in it. Um, I think since I've had this truck, or since I had this turbo, I think I put it. It doesn't even have twenty thousand on it. It probably has like fifteen, between fifteen and seventeen thousand miles on the turbo setup. So it's not even. It's relatively not even that old. Uh, good shaft play, oil's good, no issues with it. So let's get. That is not what a truck bar is supposed to look like. No bueno. So I figured before I start taking apart the second gen swap kit, I figured I'd show you guys a little, a little something, something we're working with. So these are the colors for the compressor covers for the compound setup. Went ahead, got powder coated. Uh, my man Kevin over at Full Sand Diesel hooked it up with that Spanish Illusion Fly, man. This thing looks beautiful. It looks really good in the sun. This is the first time I'm actually truly looking at it in the sun. And I like it. It's going to look good in the engine bay. Uh, eventually, I'm going to take off the intake horn, to, uh, strip the paint, take it to him so he can powder coat that too. Um, no, I'm not going to do my suspension that color. Uh, I like the gold on the suspension currently. But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. But in the engine bay, when you pop the engine bay open, it's going to look sick. Definitely. So I'll probably eventually take the rocker box off too and then get all that looking good. But just wanted to show you all a little...
a lot easier to get on there uh, when you take the actual your turbine housing off and all that stuff so it'll just be the exhaust housing you guys will see in a sec what I'm talking about all right get back with Well, you guys, that's all she wrote. It's official. The S467 is gone. She's not gone, gone, but you know, she's off the truck. Downpipe from the HX40 downpipe, the turbo, all the oil font, the drain line, feed line. She gone. On to big, on to bigger and better. So over here, I already got some of the stuff boxed up. I got the track bar boxed up in that box. Gonna be sending that back because it's a piece of junk. Yeah, so we got everything here. Um, so, fun fact, when I ran my S467 setup, I never used the original 3-inch uh, hot side pipe or boots because, as some of y'all might know, some of you might not know, I have a Mishimoto intercooler, which is a 3.5-inch uh, outlets or inlets, however you want to view it. Uh, so, those were too skinny and too small for these 3.5-inch uh, outlets on here. So, that right there is the actual Mishimoto boot along with camera focus along with that boost pipe up there that's a three and a half inch boot pipe and that's a three and a half inch boot right there uh, I had to do a little fabricating pretty much cut that in half because it's originally set up for the stock turbo setup the HE 351 so uh, the, the the person who's getting this turbo kit uh, he's gonna be getting pretty much brand new brand new boots uh, cold side or hot side with a brand new boost pipe and brand new uh, v-band clamps not v-band uh, boot clamps so everything looks good and his downpipe for him is going to be wrapped already because I wrapped it when I first installed it a long time ago. So yeah man, it was good. I ain't going to lie, I got a little sentimental. Uh, <laughs> that was the, you know, got a little sentimental taking it off because this is that's, that S4C7, that's the first turbo I ever put on any of my vehicles. Uh, so you know, it got a little, little meaning to it to, uh, behind it. But I know it's going to be in good hands and you know, they're going to get to enjoy it as much as I did. So that turbo... That turbo got a lot of life in it left. Uh, if I was a betting man, I'd be willing to bet that turbo can make on a normal street truck. And I'm not talking about somebody who floors it every time they drive, but a normal driving person with a normal street truck, you know, mild mods, uh, there's no reason that turbo can hit 80,000 miles. Uh, you know, it shaft plays on point. You know, it, it, it it's just a good turbo. The 467 on the U67s, in my opinion, is a really good turbo, and they sound amazing. They sound so good. So I'm going to box all this up, uh, and then come back over here and I'm gonna go ahead and take off the manifold that three-piece second gen style manifold take that off and then I'm gonna paint it repaint it because I painted it a while ago but I'm gonna repaint it with some uh, exhaust manifold paint and then I'm gonna reinstall it but I'm gonna install manifold studs and also I'm gonna flip it because it has to be in the upward position the high mount position for the compound kit to get installed so good stuff all right, you guys, so we're back. Some time went by. I ran my errands, dropped off the uh, turbo. That is going to the new owner. She, he should receive it Saturday. Uh, dropped that off, UPS. Then I stopped at the post office because I had to return the uh, track bar. So that's on its way back to California, wherever that piece of shit came from. Uh, so now, and then I also stopped at Advanced Auto. Picked up a couple of things. Need some brake cleaner. Always need brake cleaner. Uh, more specifically, I picked up some manifold paint and manifold clear. Okay, uh, VHT makes a line of high temperature uh, paints and you know clear coats and stuff. So I went ahead and picked that up. Uh, I did do I used this before on the top side, and it actually did a pretty good job. Um, I only did one coat just because I was curious to see how it would work. But I'm I'm I think it's going to look good. Uh, you can tell clear as day. This is the top side. Well, previous top side because now that's going to be the bottom and that was the bottom uh, that pretty much turned like that a week a, a week after I initially installed the turbo uh, these manifolds and then that implies uh, applies to the turbos too, the turbine housings they come uh, raw they might look like they're coated but that's just the raw metal in it the minute if you live anywhere where it's humid like me the minute you get a humid day or some moisture gets inside your engine bay which is 100% normal it's just gonna turn orange 
Um, I've, ha I've heard a few people say Steve Speeds do the same thing. They do have, and uh, Eric over at OKC was the one who told me about it, they do have people that can like actually paint this stuff or they sell paint, like specific manifold paint, uh, which looks really good and stuff. But me, you guys know me, I'm pretty resourceful and cheap. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm cool rocking the old spray can. So plus, you know, if it works for me, then you guys know you can do it too. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and slap a couple coats of or a coat of black on it, let that cure, then slap another coat. I'll probably do three coats of black and then maybe two coats or three coats of the clear. While that's drying, I'm gonna take y'all up front and show y'all some stuff I discovered while uh, taking the turbo out of. All right, so that's the first coat. It lays really good. Um, so I was reading the can. I got a spot I got to hit up. I was reading the can, and there's actually a curing instruction or curing step that I had no idea about. Um, yeah, so apparently when you put this on, like you can do it two ways. You could cure it in the oven, high temp, or you can do it with on the vehicle. If you do it on the vehicle, first time they want you to let it idle for 10 minutes, cool for 20. Idle for 20 minutes, cool for 20 and then drive for 30 minutes, normal conditions, let it cool for 30 minutes. And then it's apparently fully chemically resistant cured. I got a little spot I want to hit up. That's my left hand, cut me some slack. But yeah, so, yeah, but this stuff, I mean, it, it, it does what it needs to do, man. So hopefully everything works out. I'm, I'm curious to see how it looks. Well, I know it's gonna look good in the truck, but I'm curious to see how it's gonna look down the road. Uh, so while we let that dry, I'm gonna go in the front and I'll talk to you guys and show you guys I also forgot to mention you guys, I don't even remember if I mentioned it. Got track bars back on. My boy Ryan over at Steel Tooth Fab dropped it off last Saturday. He was able to relocate my front bracket, so look, they went up like an inch and a half. So we got track bars back on and it rides so much better, you guys. Uh, it just hit me, I just remembered. So definitely, definitely, if you got a lifted truck, track bar is a absolute must. All right, you guys, we out here. All right, you guys, so. First order of business, uh, we had an apparent, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm willing to bet that we had some sort of minor uh, exhaust manifold leak coming from the head to where the manifold connects up. Reason being is because when I took, I wish I was recording this earlier, but I was kind of pressed with time. When I was taking off the manifold, the bottom, the back one, the back one, that one, and I think this one right here my fingers at, all three of those were finger loose. Um, when I initially installed this manifold, I torqued it to spec, which I believe is like 31 or 35 foot-pounds. Um, I torqued all of them, even the ones back there. Uh, I, I used a uh, special Allen head to get back there. I torqued it to spec. Didn't think of it. Um, everything's black back there, like, you know, paint-wise and stuff. So it's like if it was white and I saw black soot back there, I know some there's an exhaust leak or some sort of manifold leak somewhere. But I never really noticed. And then my EGTs were fine. I never had a high EGTs. I actually had really good EGTs in this truck. Um, everything was fine. Like I never really, you know, figured I was losing exhaust pressure, which is actually a bad thing because your turbo is not going to be operating in this efficient range because you're losing some of that back pressure instead of it going into the turbo. It's uh, just leaving the side of the manifold, which is not good. Uh, one of the gaskets, I took it off. Let's see if I can show you guys. One of the gaskets was separated, delaminated that's the correct term yeah this one so when you get them these type of gaskets are packs one second yeah they're packs uh, it's probably about I don't know two three laminates in it maybe four I don't know one of them was like delaminated itself uh, when I took it off it fell off and it like split in different pieces so the good thing is we have brand new manifold gaskets we also come over here I forgot to I forgot about this we also have if I can make it back here without tripping on myself. Where's it at, where's it at? Bada boom. We have some manifold studs from KPDP. I don't know what it stands for, but these are gonna be for your five, nine, six, seven Cummins. Uh, we have those, these make installing manifolds hell of a lot easier, plus it looks nice. Uh, I couldn't, I could not, I refuse to reuse those bolts because I'll never forget the first time I put that manifold on this truck and it was a nightmare. The, you get two holes lined up and next thing you know another three holes aren't and 
we ain't got to worry about that no more. So tomorrow morning uh, is when I'm going to start attempting to install the uh, the compounds. So what's going to happen is I'm going to clean out. I'm going to clean up all in here. Sorry, my camera's getting caught on something. I'm going to clean up all in there. Get all that stuff looking good. Make it look righteous. Uh, got a little... I, I got a feeling it's that plenum gasket. If my camera will stop focusing on the dipstick because nobody cares about that. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. Anyways, all back there is a little oily residue. It's not super bad, like wet, but we are going to clean it up. Uh, even down there. Thank you, camera. Uh, get all that stuff cleaned up. Uh, pretty sure my... I need, I need to take that cover off and put the billet one on already and set up the catch can. So, yeah, we got our work cut out for us. And then we also had a little, I don't know if my oil filter is tight because when I put it on there, I made sure it was tight. But we got like a little bit of oil there too. I don't know if that was coming from the fitting because there's a fitting on the, there's a fitting right here that is screws into the side so that way you can uh, run the oil feed line for your turbo. I don't know if it was leaking from there a little bit, but we're going to, I'm going to get everything uh, on point. And then my last thing I noticed, if you guys look down here, that is my motor mount, okay? Get that cable out the way. That is my motor mount, passenger side. Pretty sure that motor mount's about shot. That, uh, all that rubber in there. I don't know if it's from getting hot from the turbo, being above it, but all that rubber down there just looks, don't look the best. So, it, it, I'm not changing that mount soon because it's fine, but uh, definitely down the road, gonna be addressing that, getting new mounts on here, because it's almost 200,000 miles, so. I figure it's about time. Got the EGT probe off. Uh, that gave me a little challenge too. But everything else went pretty smooth, you guys. Real cool. All everything's gone, man. It's kind of it's kind of weird looking at my truck. All so much space over here. So tomorrow morning we'll come out here, get the cracking, uh, take the battery tray out, get all this out the way because when you're doing something, when you're doing a second gen swap, you want as much room as possible. Now I can only imagine when you're doing on top of each other compounds. You want max room. Uh, if anybody's curious for my compound setup, it does not require a AC line relocation uh, line for your this one coming from your uh, condenser. Well, not condenser, evaporator. So we should be good. We should be good. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to t uh, show you guys that. So you know, if you got a second gen swap setup on your turbo or for a turbo setup, uh, maybe a, you know, go in there and check your manifold bolts. Make sure they're all tight and snug down because I. I'm, I'm religious when it comes to torquing things to the, spec, the specification that they, they get torqued to. I mean, I torque my wheels and everything, so I know I torqued them good and right. Uh, you know, I didn't do a retorque on it, but that, maybe that could have been it. You know, a hot, hot, cold cycle on it maybe cause it to, I don't know, loosen up a little bit. But, yeah, check that out. That way you guys aren't losing any boost because, no, losing power is not cool. All right, you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up right here. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is go back in the backyard put a, uh, two more coats of manifold paint on the manifold and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drop some clear on it and then that's it for today I'm done uh, tomorrow morning I'm gonna come out here lay all my tools out I'm gonna lay everything for the turbo setup out on uh, I got a blanket I'm gonna lay it all out on the ground so that way I can kind of decipher it so the intention is I want to make a full step-by-step -step tutorial video on how to install uh, compound turbos from Smedin specifically on a 6.7 Cummins but it obviously it would it would most likely apply to a 5.9 as well a uh, little dis little disappointed that for such a uh, tedious job and you know time-consuming job you don't get instructions uh, if there's something I have to say bad about anything it'll probably be that a little disappointing in that because it's pretty much like hey go at it you know so Oh, we'll be okay though. We'll be all right. So until next time you guys, thank you for checking out the channel. Take it easy. Be safe. Have a good week. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.